We're letting our awareness enter into our body, globally entering the body, noticing areas of tightness or tension, and breathing out on the exhale, releasing that tension as best we can. Notice any slumping, any collapsing, any constriction, any contraction. Let the skeletal structure be open, long and tall, tall and wide. Nice, open, spacious skeletal structure. And let the muscles just relax and hang off the bones. So the bones are very upright and straight. The muscles are very soft and relaxed. And just letting the hands rest below the navel, just reminding ourselves of our center, our core, letting the mind and the breath come together just below the navel. Breathing in, belly expands. Breathing out, the belly settles back in towards the spine. Each out breath is a releasing breath. And letting the arms hang completely with gravity. Imagine you're in a nice pool of water. Your feet are just touching the bottom of the pool. Water maybe about mid chest height. Just your intention forward is enough to send the arms floating in front of you. And just the idea of your hard elbow points are enough to draw the arms floating down. So it's very soft, very floating, very flowing. And the mind leads the way. If we were actually in that pool of water, just the intention would be enough to instigate the movement. And also if we're in that pool of water, as the arms flow forward, we would feel the shoulder joints just release and open. Good. And then one foot 45 degrees, front foot is straight not quite directly in front, a little bit over to the side, so we're not in a step. Hanging from the string, shifting forward, shifting back, forward, the arms flow in front, coming back, the back leg is the hand that's underneath. It's actually still, again, right, true to my center line. So my arms are just doing this, So they're actually not drifting away from the center line. I'm not twisting. Turning the hip a little bit, that's why it looks like the hands are over here. It's only because my hips have turned a little bit. But actually, my hands have not drifted away from my center line. And by the way, my hands aren't actually touching, not quite touching, a little bit of space, and also not touching my torso either. So out a little bit, a little bit apart. And again, arms are almost straight, but we always have unlocked joints. Knees unlocked, as we know, elbows are also unlocked. So here, also here, elbows are not locked straight. They're bent a bit, and in fact, bent in a way that the angle of the bend is down, so the elbows are pointing towards the ground. That's a, a basic principle in Tai Chi. Elbows are pointing towards the ground, because if they're not, if the elbow's pointing out to the side, all this rises up and creates a lot of tension. So basic principle throughout Tai Chi is the elbows are pointing, pointed towards the ground. Quaint little saying in Tai Chi, another way of putting it is we have invisible weights, invisible weights hanging from the elbows. So not that, invisible weights hanging from the elbows. Or we call them settled elbows or sinking elbows, dropped elbows pointing towards the ground. So that's always the case. So here, I'm not up here, shoulders down, 
elbows down. Shoulders down, elbows pointing towards the ground. And it improves everything if we think of doing our movements in tight in water. It improves everything. And believe it or not, I actually literally recommend all the Tai Chi students actually do Tai Chi in the water, whether it's an individual Tai Chi moves or an actual set. I've done that many times and I really encourage people to do that because it will really inform your Tai Chi, really improve your Tai Chi. It's literally the qualities we want. And having that experience even just once or twice gives the mind an aha experience. Oh, okay, I can bring this out on dry land when I'm doing my Tai Chi. I can, now I know what I want to feel in my body, the quality that I want. Ah, oh, that's how the shoulder joints open. They can just release and open. Oh, that's how I can just hang and have a sense of just hanging and floating. So things that the mind can't just do and create, you have to experience it. And being in water can really give you that direct experience. We switch sides. Take a moment when you start. This applies whenever we start from a particular move, whenever we're doing an individual move, rather than going right into it. Okay, so I'm gonna do a toyu, so okay, and I go right into it. That's not really the best way because there's all kinds of not so good things that I'm gonna carry with me through the movement. It's always good to start the move with a pause, a mindful pause. So for example, if I started here and just start going into it, I won't ever get the chance to go, oh, I could drop my shoulders a bit more. Well, my elbows aren't actually quite pointing down, are they? Well, I'm actually leaning forward a little bit here so I can hang a little bit more directly. So having a mindful pause will improve the quality of our movement once we start moving. Of course, we want our knee directly over our foot, not inside. Feet stay flat. Hanging from the string, belly is released. Shoulders soft and released. Okay. So last time we left off at this new and strange and wonderful move called fan through back. Arms are doing strange things. So let's start with that. We'll review that and uh, then put that in context. And we'll, we'll do the moves before that and after that. But let's, let's break down fan through back again. So I'll give you a visual again. So show you from a couple angles. So fan through back. Again, this move happens a couple times in the set. So as usual, let's, uh, let's do the footwork first. Um, I'll face this way, so we're facing the same way to start with. So to put it in context, I'm here. So the left leg is forward, forward stance, and the left hand will be low. So if I was to be your mirror. So right hand is high, left hand is low. It's the opposite of what usually the coding is, right? So that's just to give you the context here, but we're not gonna worry about the arms just for the second. So shifting the weight slowly back to the right leg, turning as far as comfortable on the left heel, shifting the weight back to the left leg, make sure the knee is bent. When we're ready, we pick up the right foot and swing it over so we're not instepped. And then straight forward with that right foot and then turning on the left heel to bring the left toes to the corner. So 
we have 45 degrees between our feet. So let's do that once again. Weight slightly forward on the left leg, shifting 100% back. We don't want to lean back. We're hanging from the string, so we're straight up and down. But we end up sitting into the right hip, turning the left foot as far as comfortable, shifting 100% weight back to the left, so sitting into the left hip. When we're ready, we pick up the right leg, pick up the right knee, swing the foot over until it's straight to the side wall, shift the weight, correct the back foot. And maybe once, and I'll face this way, okay? This is the way we're actually facing it in the set. Facing the side wall, shifting the weight back, turning as far as comfortable on the left heel, shifting all the way back to the left leg. When we're ready, bring the right foot over, over enough so it's not gonna be in step, shift the weight, turn on the left heel 45 degrees. Maybe take a little look Make sure that you're not in step. If you're in step, if the right foot is directly in front of the left, we just know that when we step over with the right foot, it has to go a little bit more. But again, when you step over to avoid in stepping, make sure the toes don't drift to the corner because then I've got more than 45 degrees between my feet. So when I shift, when I step over, I wanna make sure the foot stays true and straight that side wall. Okay, how are we doing with the footwork? Are we okay with that? Yeah. Okay. So let's bring the arms right into it. Here we are here, left hand low, right hand high, left leg is forward. As we shift the weight back, picking up the left toes and turning on the left heel, the hands switch. Bottom hand goes up, top hand goes down. So when we get the weight all the way over to the right leg, of course that knee should be bent. Here, the left hand is high, right hand is low, 12 and six o'clock. Shifting the weight back to the left leg sends both arms back in that direction until they pass each other. Right hand going to 12 o'clock into an open fist, left hand stays palm down through six o'clock I step over with the right foot, shifting the weight forward. I correct the back foot by turning on the left heel. Right fist comes to the right hip, and that's palm up with the hip. Left hand went from palm down to the floor, eventually just follows that same curve, goes palm forward. So this, would, this is not too different from the end of brush knee. Okay. We go again. Okay, left hand low, shifting back, left toes and left fingers go up, right hand comes down. 12 and 6 o'clock with the weight on the right leg, shifting the weight back to the left leg, arms go to the left, right hand high, left hand low, stepping over with the right foot, right fist into an open, right hand into an open fist, left hand faces the floor, and then faces the wall. Maybe a couple more times like that. Let me know if you have any questions. Here we go. And once again. And here we go. 100% weight shift, 100% weight shift. Stepping over, right hand high into a fist, the left hand stays low. Then if we continue from here, we go into chop with fist. First we come back to hold the bouquet. So we shift the weight to stand into the left leg. We can touch down for a balance step if you want. Hold the bouquet. Step with the right heel, half a step in front of the left foot. And we're going to turn the right leg and foot to the right corner and shift the weight forward for chop with fist. And all the weight into the right leg peels off the uh, left heel. Then a full step on the left heel, 
for parry and punch. Let's just do that little section again. So band through back to that point there, band through back, chop with fist, step parry and punch. That's a nice little section there. Okay, so from the very beginning, band through back, here we go. Shifting forward, correct the back foot, 45 degrees. Now we're gonna shift the weight back and hold the bouquet. You can touch down, balance step, and then go to the heel, or you can simply go right to the heel without the balance step. Shifting forward, chop with fist, all the weight into the right leg, peels off the left heel, then a step on the left heel for parry and punch. Now maybe watch me do that once where you don't have to worry about following and just take it in visually. All right, Brad, just to clarify, your feet are at the end pointing to the right wall, okay? At the end, at the end of the punch? Yeah, both of your feet, oh, I guess it's 45. Okay. It's 45, so with that- Oh, your right foot. Yeah, okay. that, that right foot is 45 to the corner. Okay, thank you. Right foot is to the rear corner, 45. Left foot is pointing to the side wall. Okay, thank you. Okay. So yeah, if you wanna just uh, take that in visually here. So I can come back to hold the bouquet and touch down and then go to the heel, half a step, or I can dispense with that balance step, shift the weight, come back, hold the bouquet, and just go right to the heel. So I just wanted to show you that difference, that option. So after fan through back, I can shift the weight back, hold the bouquet, little balance step here, then onto the heel or the chop, or I can dispense with that balance step and simply go from Forward stance, right to half step on the heel. So that would look like this. Shifting the weight back, hold the bouquet, peel off the front foot and go right to the heel for that turn. Okay. Yeah. So you're, when you step with your right foot, you're putting your right foot in front of the left foot. Is that correct? Yeah, let's get the camera. So trap with fist here. So I'm at the end of band through back. So. Closer here. So I shift the way back, hold the bouquet, and that's right in front. Okay, that's right in front. Okay. I'll drop with this and shifting back. The foot is half a step, but right directly in front. And I turn that foot to the corner as I shift the weight into it. There okay, you thank you. It's one foot clarifying. in front. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah. So Let's do that a couple more times. Okay, here we go. Let me know if there's any questions as you follow along here. There's something that's not quite clear. Step over on the right heel, shift the weight forward. I got to correct the back foot by turning on the left heel, get to the corner. I shift the weight back, hold the bouquet. Now, if I don't use the balance step, I peel off the right foot, place it right on the heel in front of my left foot, shift the weight forward and turn the right foot to the corner or chop with fist, bring the fist back to the hip, peels off, peels off the back heel, step on the heel for parry and punch. Okay, let's do that one more time. Okay, here we go. Shifting the weight back, or chop with fists. Then step, parry and punch. Now, if we continue from here, from here we go into grasp bird's tail, but we have to do a little bit of, of footwork here to get into it. We shift the weight back a little bit, 
the turn on the left heel to get the left foot to the corner. Then we shift the weight back to the left leg to stand on it, hold the ball, step with the right heel, and we're into grass bird's tail. So we'll just continue with this a little bit because as always, after grass bird's tail is single whip. So that's always the case. Grasper's tail is followed by single whip. So let's do that. A little bigger section there. So we'll front panther back right to single whip. Okay. So hang out. Again, that mindful pause, that mindful moment. Check the breathing, the alignment, relaxation. Breathing. And here we go. 100% weight shift, 100% weight shift. Still vertical, still nice and straight, hanging from the string. Stepping over, correcting the back foot. Coming back to hold the bouquet, half a step on the right heel. Turning the right foot to the corner for chocolate fist, all the way into the right leg to bring the fist back to the hip. Full step on the left heel, for parry and punch. Now going into grass bird's tail. So we need to rock back a little bit so we can turn easily on the left heel, left foot to the corner, right hand opens and comes underneath to hold the ball. Full step on the right heel, not in step of course. The grass bird's tail sequence. Hanging from the string, using those legs. Breathing into the abdomen. 100% to the left, 100% to the right leg. Touch down, correct the right foot to the corner. And then full step on the left heel. So why don't we do that one more time, that section there. So Brad, on the second touch on the grasper part, we're touching the wrist. I didn't even see you there. Oh, sorry, I snuck in. <laughs> yeah, I can't see you. Um, what was the question, Jackie? In the middle of Grasper's tail on the second time, we're touching the two wrists? Yes. So the first time, palms facing, not touching. Okay. Second time, touching. Okay. Okay, let's do that section again. That whole little section there. Here we go. and punch. Now we go into Grasper's tail. First we need to rock back a little bit just so we can turn easily on the left heel. Get the left foot to the corner. Right hand opens and drops underneath to hold the ball. Step through on the right heel. Grasper's tail. Single whip. Correcting on the right heel, get the right toes to the corner. Full step on the left heel. And maybe just check, make sure you're not in stepped. Okay. Any questions in there at all? In that whole section. Just remind me again, the way the, your fist is, is it, which way is it when you parry and punch, sorry? It's called a vertical fist. So parry and punch, if you're talking about this part here, yes. that would be a vertical punch as opposed to a horizontal punch. So 
this punch this way. Thank you. So if I kind of wind up to that, I come in to chop with fist. Here, that's palm up. But for the parry and punch, so my hand has rotated from palm up, rotate to vertical. So technically it's palm up to palm facing the side. Yeah. Thank you. So let's take it from cross hands. First cross hands, right to that point there, single whip. Okay. So that's quite a large section. So feet shoulder width, hang out, knees unlocked, belly released. And even though we have the arms up, the shoulders are down, nice open space here. Again, knees are bent, shifting the weight to the right, turning on the left heel, shifting the weight back to the left leg. When we're ready, we step with the right heel into the corner, correct the left foot by turning on the left heel. So carry tiger to mountain. Single whip, it's the open single whip with the arm. So all the weight to the left, turning on the right heel as far as comfortable, all the weight to the right leg, touching down on the ball of the left foot, turning on the right heel to get the right toes to the front wall, open T shape to the front wall. From the left ball of the foot to the left heel, turning the left foot to the corner as we shift the weight slowly into it. Hands just brush through the air. Step with the right heel into the right corner over a bit so we're not in stepped. Turning on the left heel to avoid to get our 45 degrees back. Slowly standing into the right leg, touching down on the left heel for fist under elbow, right fist under left elbow. Going into repulse monkeys from the heel to the ball. Half step back. Dropping the foot 45 degrees, correcting the front foot by picking up the heel, turning on the ball of the right foot, and then flattening it straight. Left hand is low, right hand is forward. Flat foot to the ball. Half step behind, dropping the right foot 45 degrees, picking up the left heel, turning on the left ball of the foot to straighten it and flatten it. Right hand is low, left hand is forward. Flat foot to the ball, half step behind, correcting the front foot. So that was the three repulse monkeys. Going into slanting flying starts just like another repulse monkey, but a full step instead of half a step. So flat foot the ball. Be ready to take a full step straight back. We still plant that right foot 45 degrees, not anymore all the way to the right leg, turning on the left heel to get the left foot facing the corner, pointing to the corner. Shift the weight to stand into the left leg. Right hand comes underneath to hold the ball. Straight step towards the front wall, the right heel, shifting the weight forward, serving T. It's called slanting fly. Half step up with the back foot, touch down on the right heel, or raise hands a step up. Turn, hold the ball. Full step on the right heel. Both feet pointing to the corner, the parallel feet. Going into stork, spreads wings. Arms into brush knee position, brush knee ready position. Full step on the left heel for brush knee. Half step up, just like play the fiddle, but instead of going on the heel of the left foot, it's going to be the ball of the left foot and touch the right wrist. A little one-legged squat, in other words, keeping the weight in the right leg, the back leg, as you sink into a bit of a squat and bend at the hips. Coming up, 
Weight stays in the right leg, the back leg. Full step on the left heel. And here we are entering into hand through back. So left hand is low, left hand goes up, right hand goes down as we shift the weight to the right. Shifting the weight to the left, both hands go left. Right hand continues up into a fist, left hand is low. Stepping over with the right heel, correcting the left foot. Fist comes to the hip, left hand forward. Coming back to the left leg to hold the bouquet, to go into chop with fist. Full step on the left heel, the parry and punch. Now we need to rock back on the left, rock back with the weight so we can turn easily on the left heel to get the left foot to the corner. So we can go into Grasper's tail. Right hand opens, comes underneath, hold the ball as we step. Grasper's tail. Still hanging from the string, breathing into the abdomen. Shoulders relaxed down. And to single whip. 100% weight shift to the right. 100% to the left, rather. Now 100% weight shift to the right. Touchdown. Correct the right toes to the corner if they're not there already. And then full step on the left heel. Okay. Well, Brian, let's, let's, yes. Mm -hmm. Can you go over parry and punch? I somehow have both feet parallel and I don't think it's right. For parry and punch? Yeah. So parry and punch. So this is chop with fist. This is parry and punch. Is that where you mean? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Okay. So what may have happened? So let's go through band through back to that point. Okay. And we can see what happened there. So of course the left leg is forward here for the beginning of band through back. Left hand is low, right hand is high. So shifting to the right leg, shifting back to the left leg. Right hand high into a fist, left hand low, correcting the left foot to the corner. So right foot is forward, we shift the weight back, stand into the left leg, half a step on the right heel. We turn the right foot to the corner as we shift the weight and do the chop with fist. All the weight into the right leg, peels off the left heel. That's a straight step on the left heel. Left foot is straight to the sidewall. So Jackie, how are your feet now? Are they 45? Yeah, they're not bad, but I, I gotta watch when I move that left foot that I move it quite far forward. Okay, uh, where is your right foot pointed? Is it to the corner or to a wall? To the wall. And where is your left foot pointed? To a corner or a wall? Corner. Okay, so we wanna get, so this is chopped with fist that the foot turns to the corner and then we have a straight step on the left foot to the wall. Okay. Okay, let's do that once more. Okay, here we go. So if I talk about walls and corners here, then the right foot is pointing to the side wall and we turn on my left heel to get my left toes to the corner. Shifting back, standing into the left leg, touchdown, half a step on the right heel. Right foot, right leg turns to the corner as I shift the weight into it. And now a straight step on the left heel. So left foot is straight to the sidewall. Now to go to Grasper's tail, we rock back so we can turn easily on the left heel, turn it to the corner, stand, right hand comes underneath for hold the ball, straight step on the right foot. Grasper's tail sequence, hang out and breathe. All the way to the left, all the way to the right. 
touch down. Now, if you haven't, if you don't have your right toes to the corner, turn a little bit on the right heel, get them there. Single whip. Let's take it one more time from first cross hands right to that position. Okay. So feet parallel, shoulder width, hang out, breathe into the belly, shoulders down and released. Shifting right to turn on the left heel. Shifting to the left leg, stepping with the right heel into the corner, correcting the left foot. So carry tiger to mountain. Shifting back to the left leg, turning as far as comfortable on the right heel, shifting all the way back to the right leg, touching down on the ball of the foot, left foot, so we can turn on the right heel to get our toes to the front wall. From the left ball to the left heel, slowly shift the weight into the left leg as it turns to the corner. Step with the right heel, into the right corner, right hand high, correct the left foot by turning on the left heel. Stand into the right leg, right hand drops down into a fist, left heel lightly touches down. From the heel to the ball as we go into repulse monkeys. Straightening the front foot, flat foot to the ball, half step back. Shifting back, straightening the front foot by turning on the ball, flat foot. Flat foot to the ball, half step behind. Shifting back, straightening the front foot, flatten. Flat foot to the ball, a long step behind. Shifting back, rotating the left toes to the corner. Shifting back to stand in the left leg and hold the ball. Straight step, the right foot to the front wall, shifting the weight forward, the slanting fly, like serving tea. Half step up, raise hands and step up. Turn and hold the ball. Remember the weight stays in the left leg there. Turn and hold the ball. Hold the ball as you step, right foot to the front wall. The toes are to the corners, parallel feet. Touch down, where stork spreads wings. Make sure the right knee is bent. Arms into brush knee ready position. Full step for brush knee. Half step up. Now instead of touching down on the left heel, touch down on the ball of the left foot. Touch the right wrist. Needle at sea bottom. Point the fingers towards the ground as you do a little tiny squat on the Back leg coming up. You ready, step, straight step on the left heel, shifting forward, left hand low, right hand high. Shifting back, we switch the hands. Shifting back, we switch the hands again. Right hand goes high into a fist, left hand stays open, low. Shifting forward at the right leg, turning on the left heel, get our 45 degrees. Shifting the weight back to hold the bouquet, half step on the right heel, turning the right foot to the corner as we shift the weight forward for chop with fist. All the weight into the right leg, peels the left heel off, and then step with the left heel for parry and punch. Rock back a little bit so we can turn easily on the left heel, left toes to the corner, so we can stand into the left leg and hold the ball, right arm underneath. We'll step on the right heel, and grasp bird's tail sequence. Hang out and breathe. All the way to the left leg, turning on the right heel, all the way to the right leg. Balance step with the ball of the left foot, 
turning on the right heel if the toes aren't already to the corner. Single rep. Still hanging from the string, breathing into the belly. Good, so that's some good ground and some good work there for one class. Let's do a little wind down. Hang out, mind and breath resting in the bowl of the hips. The weight exiting freely through the feet. Let the arms hang with gravity, flowing forward, shoulders stay down and released. Let the elbows pull the arms down. You can have a very slight rising and sinking, if you like, using the legs. And if you want to time the breath, breathing in is the rising, breathing out is the sinking. Just like if you were in a pool of water, breathing in would be enough for everything to rise and buoy up. Breathing out would be enough for everything to sink. It says just as if you're doing this in a, in a pool of water. Breathing in is rising, floating, expanding. Breathing out is settling and sinking, just like it would be in water. 